The first week of Denver Broncos training camp is in the books, and Broncos fans want to know about position battles, individual players, surprise cuts, surprise roster makes, and more. You get that on this very special AMA episode, Locked On Broncos. You are Locked On Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Sunday, Broncos country. Welcome into a brand new episode of Lockdown Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you so much to everybody in Broncos country for making Lockdown Broncos their first listen of the day every single day, whether it's on your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you're watching on YouTube. Thank you so much. Do us a favor, hit that subscribe to that follow button if you have yet to do so already for your daily Denver Broncos news content and coverage. You get it here every single day, all year long. From the South Stands to the End Zone, I'm your host as always. Cody Rourke, Senior Broncos Analyst and Reporter for Mile High Sports and Broncos Country. Happy Sunday. This is a very special episode because every single day, usually six days out of the week, there is a training camp practice going on and we're not able to really just kind of sit back and do an AMA for the Lockdown Broncos podcast. So I wanted to dedicate a very special episode with today being a day off for Broncos players we want to get down into some of Broncos country's biggest questions so far throughout training camp. So this episode is AMA on Twitter at Cody Rourke and Phil. Training camp Mario at Mile High Mario asked the question here. We're going to kick things off here. Who will be the biggest surprise cut and who will be the biggest surprise to make the team? You know, this is going to be very tough. Like, I feel like the, the biggest surprise cut is probably the toughest one to angle just because I feel like personally, looking at this Broncos roster, this is the most talented roster that the Broncos have had in quite some time. I'm talking about even going back to last year. I thought they were pretty talented then. But this roster has depth all across the board at every major position possible. I, I don't quite know yet who will be a surprise cut. I think we have to wait for the per first preseason game, Mario, to be able to solidify that one. But I tell you what, who will be the biggest surprise to make the team? It could be wide receiver Brandon Johnson, an undrafted rookie for age. Now, Brandon Johnson has been a guy that's been standing out. Now, with the injury to Tim Patrick and him going down, this is an opportunity for him and guys like Seth Williams to really climb the ladder and help convince the Broncos that they deserve a spot on the active roster and we saw it in Saturday's practice at the UCL training center Brandon Johnson had a couple of big time catches in a two minute drill simulating towards the end of the first half catching a couple passes from Russell Wilson getting behind Ronald Darby on one of them Brandon Johnson if he continues to stack and has a really good preseason he could be the biggest surprise to make the team in my opinion that's a great question there Mario Blue Ridge Bronco says assuming the Broncos keep seven at wide receiver big assumption I know who makes the final 53 and who makes the cut for edge based on what you're seeing and hearing here's the deal wide receiver at this point I do think that seven with the injury to Tim Patrick you maybe want to spread that workload out a little bit further to some other guys here and here's what I mean by that okay Corlin Sutton Jerry Judy, K.J. Handler, Montrell Washington, those four guys, in my opinion, are solidified locks at the receiver position. Now, if you do go with the, the premise of having seven players, part of me is thinking Tyree Cleveland maybe squeaks by on the practice squad just because of the fact that he's going to be out four to six weeks with a throat cartilage injury he sustained last week at practice. But for me, it's like Kendall Hinton, a guy who emerged a little bit. He would be the fifth guy, in my opinion. And then Travis Fulgham would be the sixth guy. And then the seventh guy, you really have to wonder, who is that going to be? Could it be a Jalen Virgil, another undrafted guy? Or is it going to be a guy like Brandon Johnson? In my opinion, right now, based on what we've seen, Brandon Johnson with a guy like Caden Davis and Jalen Virgil being practice squad players and Trey Quinn for this Broncos team. And there he is, even Trey Quinn, too. Like, he has an argument to be made here. If he competes really well during the preseason, he could be, if the Broncos carry seven, that seventh guy at the position. It's very hard to determine right now just because they haven't played a preseason game just yet. Now, in terms of your edge rusher question, this is going to be a very interesting one. How many do they keep? I, I'm not quite sure about that because you know I think a lot is contingent upon will Randy Gregory be ready for that week one regular season matchup against the Seattle Seahawks. The expectation is that he will be, but as of right now, what I've been seeing a lot of, you've got a lot of Malik Reed, Bradley Chubb, Baron Browning, Nick Bonito, Aaron Patrick being one of those guys, and even Jonathan Conbo getting some work on the outside there. Uh, you know, I think once Gregory returns, it automatically displaces one of those guys. Jonathan Cooper has yet to participate in team drills. He's been very limited to position. Position only he was not there at Saturday's practice so what do you do in a situation like that I think that the top four are really solidified I think it's easily Bradley Chubb Randy Gregory Nick Benito and Baron Browning those are your top four guys but 
how many do you keep? Do you keep five? Do you keep six? In my opinion, Aaron Patrick has been a guy that has tremendous value on the special team side of the ball for this Broncos football team. So I would not be surprised if he is that fifth guy or maybe even that sixth guy. If they carry six, it's very possible that they do look at that. So much will be known, I think, after the first preseason game, maybe the direction that they go, because they're going to have to go from 90 players on the active roster to 85 after preseason game number one next Saturday against the Dallas Cowboys. So that is something to keep an eye on there. But Broncos country coming up here in just a moment. We're going to continue with your AMA questions. We're going to get into different players, especially an undrafted rookie for agent edge rusher who has not participated much in practice. What are his prospects for maybe making the roster or even the practice squad? We discussed that coming up here in just a moment, but before we do that, let me tell you about Dave, the sponsor of today's episode, Lockdown Broncos, and Level With Me. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives where we were a little tight on cash, and maybe you could only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank, or you got another save the day, and you're wondering how you're going to afford a gift. That's where Dave can help you. Dave is the banking app that can help get you up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, and catch up on bills. And you can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief that they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal instant transfer fees applies. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Future you will thank you. As we continue on with this very special Sunday Ask Me Anything episode of Lockdown Broncos, breaking down all the Broncos country's questions and thoughts here for training camp we have you covered here. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day on your favorite podcast provider and on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Uh, continuing on with our AMA, it's important. We have a lot of questions coming in from Broncos country, so I wanted to get to them on Twitter. So let's get to our next question. Tiago Portugal says, Hey Cody, do you think Christopher Allen will make the 53-man roster? Thanks and greetings from Brazil. Thank you so much for watching all the way in Brazil. In, in regards to Christopher Allen, haven't seen him practice much. He's continued to work his way back from from the foot injury he sustained last year while at Alabama. And to be honest with you, with how deep the Broncos edge rusher room is right now, I don't think that Christopher Allen's even in consideration for the 53-man roster unless he somehow comes back to practice this upcoming week and just has a three-game dominant stretch in the preseason. I just don't see it happening, unfortunately. He could be a guy that they release and maybe hope to claim on the practice squad to maybe develop him a little bit further. But then again, we'll see. He has not really been available for the Broncos to utilize so far here. Our next question comes in from Wes Chode. He says, hey, who has been getting the most run with the first group at guard? To be honest with you, Wes, here's, what's the, here's the situation here for the Broncos offensive guard rotation. They've been mixing and matching a multitude of guys, really between three guys, Dalton Reisner, Natani Muti, Quinn Miners. Those three guys have primarily been getting a majority of the reps at the guard position, and they've been switching off on and on different days. But you know what? Natani Muti is dealing with a knee injury right now, so that really impacts uh, what the prospects are for the rotation. It gives Quinn Miners there's more opportunities to get a lot of the reps at the right guard. It protects Dalton Reiser from having to rotate out a little bit as long as Natani Muti is out. So these are going to be the two guys we're going to run with at least for this week. We're going to wait for an update on Natani Muti's status. As Nathaniel Hackett said, they want to be very precautionary with it. He was not dressed in Saturday's practice, but did come out with a compression sleeve on his leg. So we'll see how that's going there. But uh, outside of that, really, the, the only three full padded practices for this Broncos team. It's really hard to get a determination as to like who's ahead and who's doing what consistently well. That is where the preseason games will come into factor here. Uh, Megan Spicy Megs 303 says, Who has impressed you the most so far? You look, I'm going to tell you this. Montreal Washington and Damari Mathis, I'm going to go with two rookie guys. One guy on the offense, one guy on the defense. Guys that have impressed me the most outside of the, the star name players like Patrick Sertan, who's had an unbelievable camp. Uh, Justin Simmons had an unbelievable camp. You know, your, your main star players. We're going to factor them out of this consideration. But when we're talking about rookies, Montreal Washington on the offensive side of the ball, doesn't matter which quarterback he's working with, whether it's Russell Wilson, Josh Johnson, Brett Rippon, he's consistently making plays and he's catching everything. I have yet to really see him drop a pass in any of the team periods. And on Saturday's practice, he had an amazing diving layout catch for a touchdown from Brett Rippon in the team period. It was a beautiful play. He continues to stack days and days and days on top of each other of good practices 
standing out, and he is the favorite in the return game to be the starter, kick returner, and punt returner for this Broncos team. And then going to the defensive side of the ball, Damari Mathis, the cornerback out of Pitt, a rookie this year. He doesn't look like a rookie in some instances. One thing I noticed from him, and I even asked Nathaniel Hacker early on in the week what he's noticed of a guy like Damari Mathis. He says just from minicamp, rookie minicamp, all the way to training camp now, He's never really played a lot of off-ball coverage in terms of where he was at. He's always a press guy at Pitt. So they're mixing and matching. He's playing some press here for the Broncos, but he's also playing a lot of off-ball man coverage, and he's doing a really good job. And he's even covered Montreal Washington really well, and Montreal has been doing a lot of damage, whether it's the first-team defense, second-team defense, third-team defense. Montreal has been a playmaker throughout camp, and now Damari Mathis has done a really good job of making plays consistently. When he's targeted downfield, he does a really great job of using his, his body to position against the wide receiver to squeeze him towards the sideline using that 12th man and he always forces incompletion so when they try to test him they don't have a lot of success downfield so I think this is something that he can build on here in the preseason these are the two players that have impressed me so far here in training camp as we talk about rookies Anthony at AMD Sports says notice some tight end wide the other day at camp was that a thing all camp or did that start picking up more after Tim Patrick went down with an injury this is something they've been doing since the beginning of camp look you're going to see a lot of 12 personnel you're going to see a lot of 13 personnel in certain situations Denver is doing literally everything they want to construct their offense based on how they want to attack different levels of the defense, but they're going to do it out of different formations, different personnel packages. This is something we've seen since the beginning of training camp. It hasn't really changed much there, but that's a great question, Anthony. Thank you so much. Kyle Werner, speaking of tight ends, comes in here and says, how has Albert O looked? I have heard he's made a couple of plays, but does he look like a legitimate tight end one? Albert O, I tell you what, through the first part of training camp, the Broncos offense was getting stymied by the Denver defense. That's just how far ahead the Denver defense was as the offense was continuing to go through their installation period. But through the last couple of days, once the Broncos have put the pads on, they've been doing the move the ball period. Albert Okwebunam has been making plays across the middle of the field. He's been catching plays at maybe about 7 to 8 yards and then taking it for about 20, 25 yards. His yard after the catch ability is on this play in a big time way. I've been very impressed with Albert O so far, but even at this point too, with Greg Dulcich now being reacclimated coming off the hamstring injury, I'm not entirely sure that Denver's really going to designate a tight end one. I mean, this could be like a situation we saw a couple years ago at running back. Everyone's like, who's going to get the first carries against the Tennessee Titans? It's going to be Melvin Gordon or Philip Lindsay. You know what the Broncos did? They put both of them on the field at the same time for the very first snap there. So I would not be surprised if the Broncos don't name necessarily a tight end one, but more so utilize all those guys there. And Eric Sobert's another name that has been standing out so far. So those are some names that you need to keep an eye on at the tight end room here for this Denver Broncos football team. But now let's go to some offensive tackle discussion here. And we get a question that's coming in from Eric at soul underscore Broncos says, how has Calvin Anderson looked on the right side? Billy Turner continues to work off on the side field as he continues to recover from the offseason knee surgery that he had. And we'll see if he'll be ready for that week one matchup. But I can tell you this, watching Calvin Anderson, day in and day out at right tackle, he's going up against the likes of guys like Malik Reed, Baron Browning. There's times he goes up against Bradley Chubb and Nick Benito. I mean, he is doing a fantastic job there. I have yet to really see him allow what we'd call a sack. Now, there's times when I'm watching him. One thing I'm looking at from a technique standpoint, when he's got a guy who's wider than him, so if he's got an edge rusher that's on the outside shade of him, He's doing a really good job of, with his kick step, not opening up too far wide and also not giving up too much on the inside. He's got perfect lateral mirror step when it comes to an edge rusher. If he's attacking straight, he does a good job punching, keeping his leverage there and anchoring down. He's done a tremendous job so far through training camp, and I think the real test will be in the preseason. But right now, Calvin Anderson is the favorite in my book, and I'd say this the discussion I've had with people around the facility. Calvin Anderson is the believed consensus right tackle one for the Broncos here this upcoming season. And look, the fact that Billy Turner has not been able to participate, it only solidifies that a little bit further for a guy like Calvin, who's been busting his tail, has this chemistry now with Russell Wilson, with the guy next to him, whoever's playing right guard, center, having that confidence amongst the offensive line you want to have that and I think that if you have a guy that you throw in there that's not quite ready that hasn't participated much that hasn't been really in the thick of things in terms of the training camp and the physicality like a guy like Billy Turner then I wonder if that does impact you 
a little bit further there. So that is a great question, Eric. Thank you so much with that. And Broncos Country coming up here in just a moment. We're going to get to several more questions. We're going to try to get through them all on today's special AMA Sunday episode, Locked On Broncos. But before we do that, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's episode of the show. That's our good friends over there, BetOnline.net. And BetOnline.net is the fastest and the easiest way to check in on all your betting needs. You can find all your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. You can find reviews and news of every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. BetOnline continues to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information from live in-game betting, scores, and more. They have you covered. So head to BetOnline today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action happening today. BetOnline, where the game starts. As we jump into the fourth quarter action on today's Sunday special episode, AMA here, Lockdown Broncos. Once again, thank you so much, everybody in Broncos country, for making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. You know, Sarah Benninger and myself, we have you covered every single day all year long for all the Denver Broncos news, content, coverage that you need all in one place on your favorite podcast and provider and here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe or that follow button if you have yet to do so already. But anyways, continue on here on AMA. I'm going to try to get through as many as I can because I think Broncos country deserves these answers because we haven't had really much of a chance to sit and talk about what's actually going on outside of just the practice structure, what's happening, the big plays, standout players, but more so diving into the details here for you, the avid listeners in Broncos country. Going now here, we're going to go to Jolene. She says, haven't heard much about Reisner. How, how is he looking in this new scheme, and is there any way that Max Borgie can make the team? Dalton Reisner, like I said, you know, there's moments hit or miss. I, I think for the most part, he's at a very solid camp, but you know what? There's only been three full day, uh, padded practices that have happened here for this Broncos team so far. So it's like you can't really give too much on the days where they weren't wearing pads and there's no contact because you can't really evaluate. How is he doing when he's you know facing a stunt his way? Is he picking it up? Is he able to engage and lock inside the frames of the shoulder pads? There's only been three fully uh, days of padded practice. We'll get a little bit more evaluation this week, and it'll be great once the Cowboys come to town on Thursday for joint practices. Now you get competition against some other guys, and I think that'll be huge for this Broncos football team. So thank you for your question. In terms of Max Borgie, I don't think he's going to make the active roster right now. It's it's clearly evident. Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon, and now Mike Boone, who's getting a lot of run, looks really good, by the way. These will be the three running backs, I think, that the Broncos carry on the active roster. Borgie, in my opinion, will probably end up being a practice squad guy if he clears waivers. He's had a, you know, a little bit of a nice introduction so far. It's only been a couple of days. He did have a touchdown off the right side. A great block by Cam Fleming to help set it up to get into the end zone during the Broncos team period at Saturday's practice. Brother Lou says, who looks to be the backup quarterback? Now, this is an interesting question, okay? Now, and I'll be very honest. The backup quarterback position right now for Denver, I, I think you have to come into the situation thinking if anything happens to Russell Wilson, Denver's going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, Josh Johnson has the athletic traits, the makeup to be able to do it. He, th- I thought he did really well stepping up for the Jets last year. I thought he did a really good job stepping up for the Baltimore Ravens in the game that they were missing Lamar Jackson and Tyler Huntley in that game. I thought he did a really good job here. But then, you know, to start training camp, Josh Johnson, in my opinion, did not look better than Brett Rippon in the first week, week and a half of training camp. But then the last couple of days, you know, when we've seen the team period, the move the ball period, fully padded practices, Josh Johnson's actually looked pretty decent. He's been making plays across the middle of the field. He's been finding guys like Montreal, Washington, Brandon Johnson, Kendall Hinton. He's been getting a wide variety of guys in the mix, especially at the tight end position. Eric Sauber's been a nice little security blanket for him. But I think that there is a competition here, at least in my opinion. At least there should be. Now, I'm not saying that Josh Johnson is going to be the clear backup guy or Brett Rippon, but in my opinion, if I were the coach, which I'm not, I'm just going to give you my opinion, I feel like Brett Rippon and Josh Johnson, they should probably compete in the preseason to see who is the backup behind Russell Wilson, or do they keep three quarterbacks on the active roster? I don't know, it's a tough decision because you have a lot of tough personnel choices that are coming up here towards the conclusion of the NFL preseason. One thing to keep an eye on there. Cameron Park says, one pass rusher I've not heard on is Jonathan Cooper. How is he doing? Hasn't done much. So really, there is nothing to really kind of report on Jonathan Cooper. Limited to to position drills only. No team action for him. Like we said, we didn't even see him on Saturday's practice. So uh, not quite sure. He could be one of those guys that gets released and maybe is brought back on the practice squad. But I don't know. I think a lot depends on... What other guys do, like Aaron Patrick, even Jonathan Kongbo, these guys who are getting in the rotation a little bit, 
during training camp practices. Something to keep an eye on there. That's a great one there. Elijah One says, Jamar Johnson or Delarian Turner Yale? Who seems to be getting more looks as a backup strong safety? Also, how good of a camp is Damari Mathis having? Look, between Jamar Johnson and Delarian Turner Yale, these guys haven't been making as many plays as guys like J.R. Reed. Uh, you even go back and you look at other guys rotating in the mix. Caden Stearns, P.J. Locke. I mean, outside of Justin Simmons and Kareem Jackson, it goes Simmons, Jackson, Caden Stearns, P.J. Locke. And then at this point, I'd say the fifth guy would have to beat J.R. Reed in terms of guys who have been making plays so far. We'll have to see how that changes a little bit with preseason game one coming up this upcoming Saturday against the Dallas Cowboys. But that is a fantastic question because that's something we are all looking for. Like all the media people we've been talking like, Who's going to solidify themselves? Who's going to make plays? Like, you have to make plays at this point at tra uh, training camp, especially with some roster cuts that are looming in the next week or so. Great question there. DJ Montoya asked the question, how is the offensive line looking? Heard that they were getting some problems with the defensive pressure. The defense has been creating a lot of pressure. There's been areas where the offensive line, I think, early on in camp has struggled. But I think in the last several days, through some of the move the ball periods, I think they've done a really good job. Now, here's the... Here's the crazy part about it. It's hard to really evaluate because sometimes when a defensive player or an edge rusher or defensive tackle or a linebacker who blitzes, they come up and they get close to the quarterback. Part of us, we sit there and we wonder, Would that is that a sack? Would that have been a sack? Because he still gets the playoff. He still throws the football regardless who the quarterback is. So you can't touch the quarterback during training camp practices. So for me, it's like really hard to tell. Like There are times where pressure is getting to, whether it be Russell Wilson at times, Josh Johnson, Brett Rippon, the Broncos defense and their aggressive nature of some of the stunts that they execute. It does a really good job of creating pressure depending on if guys execute it right, which so far we've seen a lot of that early on here in training camp. Uh, hard to tell, really hard to tell, and I think we'll have a little bit of a better idea for me, I'm going to evaluate when the Broncos scrimmage the Dallas Cowboys during uh, Thursday's practice the, during the team period, move the ball period. What do they look like against guys? Like, how, do the, how does the Broncos' offensive line adjust to a guy like Micah Parsons? That's what I'm looking at here. And our final question of the day is going to come through from Mr. Screw at Corkscrew49. He says, has the punter battle been close? Love Corliss Wayman. Now, I'll tell you this. Watching these two guys in practice... I'm excited a little bit by the aspect of a punter competition, which you know normally doesn't get highlighted during training camps. Nobody really focuses on punter competitions, but I do because I think it's super important. Sam Martin, obviously the veteran, the Broncos were to move on from him. I think they save a little bit over, you know, maybe one or two million bucks, which you know so could add up to something else down the road. But Corliss Waitman, I'd say, consistently has the best punt of the day, the best hang time, and overall best of camp so far, five point two four. And he can really boom them high elevation, which allows your coverage team to get downfield and converge on the returner to shield off maybe the direction in which they're going to try to set up a return. And their gunners do a really good job of getting downfield. But you need a guy who can boom the ball a little bit higher for that hang time to allow those guys to get down there. Denver, had, I don't think, has consistently had that element, which is why they've struggled on the special team side of things, specifically when they punt the football away to opposing teams. Sometimes you see some really big returns given up, and I think hang time is definitely one of those but I will say consistently so far in camp in a limited sample size Sam Martin has probably been the more consistent punter like I said Corliss Waitman has the biggest punts the boomingest punts of camp but the consistency in between I think is far and few in between there so I think that's something that he's going to have to continue to improve on here in camp and they could even make a decision after the first preseason game against the Dallas Cowboys. So, a lot to keep an eye on here. Various position competitions ongoing at Denver Broncos training camp this week. We'll have you covered every single day leading up to preseason game number one against the Dallas Cowboys on Saturday, August 13th. We're going to have you covered all week long here on the Lockdown Broncos podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into this very special Sunday morning AMA edition.